Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Music Hole. My name is Cole, and today we're going to be talking about my 10th entry in my Best Albums of All Time series. Um, these are albums that personally blew me away, and I'm excited to talk about them. And so today we're going back into the past, uh, back into 1984, and this is a jangle pop band called Felt uh, from Britain. And the name of this album is kind of a mouthful, but it's The Strange Idols, Pattern, and Other Short Stories. So the album is kind of like uh, just a collection of songs. Um, I, I wasn't really able to identify a theme, per se. So it's just a collection of songs, and it's a really short album. It's only 29 minutes. Um, so this review is not going to be terribly long. You know, I have, I have a few clips. Uh, of sonic highlights that I want to talk about. Um, there's several lyrics I want to talk about, but really it's going to be kind of a short review. Um, but I love this album. It's very cerebral. It's very literate. Um, it's got kind of like an almost British indie hipster coolness to it um, with the way that the singer sings and just how his voice sounds. Um, but anyway, uh, so Let's just get right into it. Hey, you can stop that game. I see your motives playing. You just want to stop the rain. So that's Roman Litter, and it's just such an energetic, fun beginning. Um, and the sound of that jangly guitar work is just really, really uh, memorable. And, you know, it's a fairly straightforward song. Um, basically, lyrically, he's just saying towards the end that, you know, I guess he's with a girl, and the girl is just, you know, doing whatever she can to stop, uh, it says, to stop the rain, which is, I guess, another way of saying that they're in an argument, and she just wants to stop the argument, basically. You know, she's going to do whatever it takes. She doesn't actually learn anything from the situation, per se. Um, it seems like, you know, the, the guy is upset about something, and the girl... It's just like, what, what, can I, what can I just say to just end this so I don't have to worry about it anymore? Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's correct, but that's how it made me feel. Um, but really this clip uh, mostly is just to display, you know, the fact that it's just an amazing beginning to this album. Just the energy is so powerful. And you're just immediately into this album. And this album in general is, you know, variations on the jangle pop you just heard. Uh, so if you like this song, you're going to like the rest of the album, basically. And so another quick thing about this album. Um, it's interesting because there's, I believe, two or three instrumentals on this album. And I'm going to talk about two of them because they're really interesting. Uh, they're really experimental. And I just thought they were great. So track two is the first one that I want to talk about. So let's check it out. So yeah, I mean, it's a short clip. And really, I don't have too much to say about it, except that it's just really interesting how you know, they start off with what's clearly a single and then immediately transition into what I can only really describe as like a classical-ish uh, guitar instrumental. I mean, it's a really unique sound. It's really different. You know, considering the fact this album, as I, as I mentioned, is only 29 minutes long, um, just the fact that they like, you know, decided to include stuff like that, I thought was really neat. Um, so that's really all I have to say about it. But track three, for me, 
is definitely one of the major highlights on this album. It's my second favorite song. It's called Spanish House. And it's got some really poetic, kind of dense lyrics going on that really stood out to me. So I clipped them. Um, so let's check them out. Again, just that guitar work is so good and the sound of it, it's just, it gets me every time. Um, I mean, really, if you like Jangle Pop, this is easily one of the top Jangle Pop albums. And it came out, you know, during the heyday of that genre back in the early 80s. And so it's a little strange how um, this band kind of fell under the radar. Although, as I mentioned, you know, the lyrics are pretty cerebral, cere cerebral. Uh, they're pretty poetic, they're pretty um, artistic. And you can really hear that in this song. I mean, other than the fact that, like, the way he sings it is really memorable. You know, he's got that, as I mentioned, like, British indie hipster coolness to the way he sings it. Um, but these lyrics stood out to me. I mean, uh, I, will, I will admit that I had trouble figuring them out, and I'm not entirely sure if I did figure them out. Um, but what I imagine is that it's another song about a relationship, and there's all sorts of like bad behavior going on. Um, you know, it's definitely not a perfect relationship. And I guess the guy... Uh, he sees through this girl's act, like she's doing things that um, are not very nice, they're not very uh, fair to this guy, but it seems like this guy is kind of just in love with this girl so much that he's, he's just going to let it um, continue in this manner, that he's just going to like allow... Uh, this kind of not so great relationship to continue, you know, because um, he says, believe me, it's what we're heading for. So it sounds like on some level, he knows this relationship is not going to last very long, but um, he's, he's just, I guess he's just going to ride it out, you know, regardless. Um, but anyway, so that's Spanish House. Um, track four is another instrumental, but it's it's not terribly interesting, in my opinion. So we'll skip it. Um, but track number five, uh, "Sunlight Bathe the Golden Glow," is easily the best song on the album. I mean, it's got a great music video as well, by the way. But the lyrics on this song are just outstanding. I mean. Definitely the best lyrics on the album, in my opinion. Um, so I clipped them for you guys. So with that said, let's check them out. You're trying to fool somebody, but you end up fooling yourself. Again, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but just another phenomenal beginning. Just so much energy, amazing guitar work. And, uh, but really though, the, the point of this clip is for the lyrics. 
which the, these lyrics are really strange from a 2021 standpoint because I mean, it, you know, when, when he wrote this song, I imagine he's referring to a poser, you know, some girl who's like posing as being like really artistic and well read or whatever. But really it, in the context of 2021, all it makes me think about is Instagram <laughs> and social media, you know, uh, cause he, he says at the end of the clip, you know, you're trying hard to make your world seem like a dream, which is literally Instagram, you know. Um, so it's, it's really strange that he wrote this in 1984 because it was just like, it's like foreshadowing our current social media situation. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Uh, so I, I thought it was great. And just the way he sings it is great. Again, you know, he's got that coolness, that indie coolness thing going on. Um, but anyway, as I mentioned, this is my favorite song, just bar none. Uh, and again, check out the music video. It's pretty cool. Um, but track number six uh, is, you know, it's, it's the beginning of Side B. There's only 10 songs. And it's a, it's a solid song. Um, nothing too crazy goes on. So nothing I, I wanted to clip per se. But track seven is pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. It's the third instrumental, and I thought it was I thought it was a really cool instrumental. It's got like a different vibe from the first one, um, so I clipped it. So let's check it out. Just a really lovely, you know, Spanish sounding guitar instrumental. I really liked it. Um, and I think these instrumentals especially just really helped this album stand out um, from the pack. You know, they've got their great singles like Roman Litter and Spanish House and Sunlight Bathed the Golden Glow. But just to include these like almost random uh, experimental guitar instrumentals. It's just really, it's a welcome change. Um, so I thought it was interesting. That's why I clipped it. Um, so with that said, we're going to talk about track number eight, uh, which is probably the best song on side B. Side B is actually pretty strong, um, almost as strong as side A. Um, but this is, this is a song that was probably my favorite from this side. So let's check it out. I was feeling desperate unable to decide between life and misery By me, like a cross that's hard to bear. Put death in my hands, and I will pay with it for sure. Yeah, so the name of the song is Dismantled King is Off His Throne, I believe it is. Um, I don't exactly know <laughs> how that ties into the song, but anyway, um, I like these lyrics a lot. You know, I can identify with the situation, you know, at points in my life where, you know, I've had suicidal thoughts occasionally throughout my life. Um, you know, but it, it's one thing to, as he says, feel desperate and have these thoughts. But, um, you know, I, as he says, it sounds like, uh, I, I guess maybe he has like a gun next to him there, there, there's, certain, there's some sort of instrument that he's now in contact with where he can just easily kill himself, is what it sounds like. 
So now he's he's basically thinking like, you know, it's it's one thing to like have these thoughts, but to have like, okay, there's a gun right there, you know, are you gonna do it or are you not gonna do it? Um, <laughs> so, um, so he's kind of like in this weird situation of like, you know, I I guess he decides he's not gonna do it, but. Um, and by the way, I could be interpreting that incorrectly, but that's that's what it made me think of is like this guy is suicidal sort of uh but he's got that instrument right there, and he could just do it right now, but he decides not to i guess um but anyway, so a really cool song, really energetic, another jangle pop perfection piece uh but anyway, so uh with that said, let's Talk about track number nine. Suppose someone said to you, your life's through. Well, you've just got one more chance left to live, which would you choose? You'd run to your mother to help you decide. We must not just stay in our rooms until we die. These lyrics in particular stood out to me. Um, just the way he says it, I thought it's interesting. But I'll admit that um, when I was trying to figure them out, I'm not sure I did the best job, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say my interpretation, you know, it's probably wrong, but let's let's just go for it. So it seems like this guy might be like a drug addict and someone's saying to him, you know, your life's through unless you choose to do something about it. You know, you've got one last uh, chance left to live. Um, but the more confusing part is at the end when he says, you know, you'd run to your mother to help you decide. Um, so I guess maybe what he means by that is uh, this guy really has no motivation for living if he's a if he's like a really intense drug addict, and the only thing that would like convince him that life is worth living is family, you know. So his mother. Um, this might be a stretch, I know, <laughs> but uh, so basically, you know. Uh, his mother and his mother's love would be like the only thing um, that could help him decide uh, that it's even worth bothering with, you know. So I could be totally wrong. Um, you know, feel free to blast me in the comments uh, telling me that that was a stupid interpretation. But, you know, it is what it is. It's what I thought when I heard the lyrics. Um, but anyway, so let's check out track number 10. Uh, it's the last song on the album. It's a pretty cool song, and I've got some more lyrics to talk about. So let's check it out. And if you won't say it now, then nothing will be said. And if you won't die ashamed, then I'll die instead. Yeah, so this part stood out to me. Um, and again, I'm not 100% certain of my interpretation, but I think I've got it. So I'm going to say my, my piece on it. So what it sounds like is um, it's another song about a relationship where the girl uh, seems like the girl has cheated on the guy, and the guy knows, but she won't admit it, you know, and, you know, as he says, if you, if you won't die of shame, then I'll die instead. So, like, she's not going to admit it. She, and she doesn't seem to be terribly ashamed about it, it sounds like. Um, but this guy clearly knows what happened. And so when he says that he'll die instead, uh, you know, I guess in some sense his heart is broken is what he means by that. Um, so that's how I saw these lyrics. I, I really like them. And again, this song um, is another great jangle pop tune. Um, just the whole album, 
as I've mentioned, it's really experimental. It's really poetic. Uh, it's very short, 29 minutes, but you know, it's just like good song after good song after good song. It, it's a lost classic, uh, really. I mean, if I'm being honest, the only reason I even heard about it uh, was just by chance. Like somebody, somebody just mentioned it to me and I was like, oh, I've never heard of these guys. And you know, a day later, here we go. <laughs> so, so I really like this album. Uh, if you like Jangle Pop, it's definitely, in my opinion, uh, one of the top examples of the genre. Um, you know, so I hope you guys like it. Um, you know, again, if you don't like it, that's totally fine. Um, I'm just excited to share it with you guys, and that's all I can do is just be excited. Um, so anyway, again, this is felt, uh, the strange idols pattern and other short stories is the, the name of the album. Check it out. Um, if you like the video, please like, and subscribe. Uh, it would really help out. I enjoy making these and again, feel free to comment below with any of your thoughts, any of your interpretations, you know, I'll check them out. Um, but yeah, have a good night.